It's usually the finer details that truly bring a model to life. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how to transform a pretty ordinary looking vehicle and add a whole lot of character to bring the scene to life. This 1960 Ford flatbed truck from Classic Metalworks looks great, but it definitely needs some dirt, oil and grime. What I love most about working with these particular models is they are very easy to dismantle, which is great when you want an outer driver. To dismantle this truck, there's simply one screw that gets removed and the rest basically falls away. The flatbed on the other hand has been glued down, but with a sharp knife and a little bit of care, you can cut the flatbed away from the chassis with no damage. In preparation for painting and weathering, I firstly mount the model onto a skewer so I don't have to hold it with my hands and then lightly wash each part with a cotton q-tip dipped in soapy water. This removes oil, dirt and grease build up from your fingers. There are some panel lines on the car shell that will benefit from a pin wash. So to help bring them out and highlight the fine details, I simply make my own wash with a few drops of Tamiya smoke and several drops of Tamiya thinners. This model has already been covered in a gloss paint so the wash will flow nicely. However, if your model has a matte coat or if you painted it a different color with a non-glossy paint, then you'll need to spray a gloss coat over the shell. That way, the wash will flow easily through the small panel lines. Don't worry too much if the paint ends up in places you didn't intend because once the enamel paint has dried, I carefully remove any excess paint with a cotton Q-tip dipped in thinners. The Q-tip only needs a very small amount of thinners, so after dipping it I roll it over a paper towel to remove the excess thinners and then very lightly drag the Q-tip over the car removing the excess paint. Avoid pressing down too hard otherwise the cotton will remove the paint from inside the panel lines. To add the grime I use a fast drying Vallejo black wash. Basically working on one panel at a time, I cover the panel with the wash and lightly remove it again with my finger. Each time I do this, a small amount of the wash is left behind as it dries. I repeat the process over and over until it has the grimy appearance I'm after. It's a trial and error process. If you make a mistake, you can use a moist Q-tip to remove the wash and then try again. The same procedure is applied to the front grille as well. And I also paint a black line across the top so it blends in a little better with the underside of the bonnet. The mirrors are painted with a craft acrylic matte silver which helps them give a nice dull appearance. To give the truck a bit of character, I paint one panel a different colour making it look like at some stage the truck was damaged and needed a panel replaced. I chose Burn Umber for this because it complements the red and doesn't stand out too much but basically you can use pretty much any colour you want. I also take this opportunity to paint the other small details like the wiper blades as well as the trim that would be around the windows and the door handles were painted silver as well. Super glue is used to attach the mirrors and once in place a little extra super glue is added from the inside to ensure they are held nice and tight. Mirrors are often the first thing that go missing from models like this. To add the dirt I use a weathering powder from AIM products. I find this stuff works really well compared to pastels and chalks, mainly because it tends to hold its colour a lot better after applying a dull coat over the top. Before applying the powder, 
I again lightly wash the model to remove any fingerprints and then with a very small amount of weathering powder on the brush, lightly dust it over the surface. Just remember to go very light with the powder. You can always add more, but if you add too much, you'll need to wipe all of it off and start over. I add the powder to the lower sections of each panel first and then feather the powder upwards, resulting in a nice blend between the heavier application near the base and a light application near the top. Once you're happy, apply a layer of dull coat over the entire model. But make sure you're happy because once the dull coat has been applied, everything below it can't easily be removed without stripping the entire model and starting from scratch. The interior gets a paint job as well, carefully painting the inside of the shell and all the small details that make up the car interior. To fit the windscreen, I needed to remove the excess mirror that poked through. Adding a driver was achieved by doing surgery on one of my Bachmann figures. But as you can see, he's a little big for the cab, so with some careful liposuction, I was able to slim him down and reposition his arms until he fit just perfectly. That's the good thing with these Bachmann figures. They are rubbery and are quite easy to manipulate. He also got a new jacket as well and a new haircut. Then once he's been test fitted, I glued him into position with some super glue. The wheel wells and chassis get a coat of Vallejo black brown and the red wheel rims get a new coat of red that's a little less vibrant. Having a matte acrylic paint helps the weathering powder stick better compared to the glossy paint. Now we just need to dust a liberal coat of weathering powder over the wheels. The chassis and wheel wells also get a layer of weathering powder and then once you're finished, apply some dull coat to fix everything in place. If you've watched the pellets video, then you'll notice the flatbed gets painted exactly the same way. The wood grain detail has already been molded into the flatbed, so it's simply a matter of applying a base coat of light brown. I ended up applying two coats, and I generally try to apply the brush strokes in line with the grain. Then dry brush the entire flatbed with beige, starting off very lightly and adding more to get the desired look. As with every other part of the model so far, I further add detail and weathering by brushing on a light coat of weathering powder. Focusing on a few heavy spots to add depth and colour variety, then tie it all together with a general coat over everything. Once finished, the flatbed gets a spray with dull coat. The flatbed can then be reattached to the chassis with super glue. Once dry, the rest of the model is reassembled. The final bit of detail that will be added to the truck are some tie down rails underneath the flatbed. Simply made by drawing a template on a piece of paper and then lightly misting the template with spray adhesive in a similar fashion to how we made the pallets in the previous video. That way the styrene won't move as we try to glue it all together. 
I'm using 0.5mm styrene rod and once it's being cut, assembled and glued together on the paper template, I then paint the rails with the silver acrylic paint as well as weather them with the dark earth weathering powder to help blend it all together with the rest of the model. Once that's done, a layer of dull coat is applied. The vertical posts are trimmed leaving about 1mm and it's then carefully positioned and glued into place with super glue. And now we're ready to start building our cargo. The pellets on the back of the truck were made in the previous video and the crates were made in a very similar fashion however instead of using styrene I'll be using strip wood. I made a template for the crates using Photoshop and if you'd also like to use this template you can download it from my website. It's in Microsoft Word format so you can adjust the scale to suit what you're modeling by adjusting the size of the template. The template is lightly glued to a board and this will make assembly much easier later on as you'll see. It's only a very light misting of spray adhesive because I want to be able to peel the paper away at a later stage. The strip wood I'm using for these crates are Midwest product scale lumber. I'm using 2x4s, 2x3s and 4x4s. There's a scale chart on the back of the packaging. Strip wood tends to have a lot of fibres on it. To remove the fibres and get a nice smooth piece of strip wood, I gently drag each piece through some very fine steel wool. You can see the difference it makes here. Now it's simply a matter of cutting all the pieces of strip wood to size and to make this job much easier, not to mention faster and more accurate, I use the Micromark Chop It. You'll probably notice this particular tool gets used quite a lot in my videos for various projects. If you're interested in having a tool like this, you can have a look at their website, micromark.com. And if you use the promo code BOULDER, you can get 10% off your order at the checkout. If you're only doing a couple of crates, cutting each piece of wood one at a time works well. However, if you're making a large batch of crates, you'll save time by cutting multiple pieces in one go. Back to our template. I give it a light misting of spray adhesive again over the template pattern. And now I can carefully place each piece of wood directly onto the template and have it held in position so it doesn't move. The vertical supports are glued with super glue. A wood glue will also work, however if you plan on applying an ink wash, you'll want to make sure the glue dries to be waterproof. The crates are then removed, but firstly mark the centre of each crate as indicated on the template. Be sure to leave these bottom planks in place as well. For that little bit of extra detail, you can also add some nail holes using a pin. Any excess wood is cut away with a sharp knife and the chopper is used again to separate each of the crate sides. The crate sides are then assembled carefully using super glue. It can be quite fiddly and if you're having trouble you can brace your hands on the table to help. Next it's just a matter of gluing the crates to the base planks. With all the crates glued you can then separate them with a blade and then remove any excess from the sides. It's not always necessary, but if required, you can tidy up the edges of each crate using sandpaper and add additional nail holes as appropriate. 
The last part of assembly is adding the feet by using 4x4 scale strip wood. Each foot is about 1.5mm long and a total of 6 are glued to the base of each crate. All the crates are weathered with an India ink and water mixture. Basically a shot glass of water and one or two drops should be enough. Then dip the entire crate into the diluted mixture. I made my mixture quite light so I ended up dipping the crates a total of three times, allowing the crate to fully dry each time before doing subsequent dips to get the desired look I wanted. There are a bunch of different products you can fill the crates with. For this I went with some pumpkins from Bush. Extra detail was added to the pumpkins by painting the stems various types of green and then they were individually glued into each crate. Another crate was made to look like apples were inside. This was done with a piece of foam cut so it would fit inside the crate. It was then painted red and whilst the paint was still wet, some Woodland Scenics apples were pressed into the wet paint on the top only. Some knock leaves were then added to add extra colour between the apples and it was then lightly sprayed with dull coat before being pressed into the crate. The cargo is then glued onto the flatbed in the desired spot so it won't simply fall away when the truck is moved. The only thing remaining is to tie it all down. Sewing thread can be used, however it has a little fuzz that needs to be removed. This is easily done by passing the thread over a candle flame a couple of times. It needs to be quite fast, otherwise the thread will break. You can see how much of a difference doing this makes. This is one of the more difficult parts of the build. Just take your time and you can use super glue to help hold the thread to the tie down rail as you make it look like the rope has been tied on. Now you have yourself one amazing looking vehicle that breathes life into your scene. Don't forget to check out my Patreon page if you're interested in helping support the channel. Every little bit helps and I have a few perks for patrons. Cheers and thanks for watching.